Let me give you what I call a jet tour, okay? So be ready. Chapter 6 uh, starts this overview of the end of days, and it goes from 6 to 19, and very rapidly we're going to go through what's going to happen, and then I'm going to show you the reason that God tells us this. Chapter 6 starts the judgments. And from the moment of chapter 6, verse 1, through the climactic return of the king in Revelation 19, all we see is a river of God's wrath. And it's kind of like, you know, when it starts raining and raining and raining up in North Dakota and the, the tributaries to the Mississippi and all of North Dakota, you know, floods, and then it floods South Dakota, and then it meanders down, starts flooding Iowa, and then it just floods all the way to New Orleans. That's kind of like what the book of Revelation is. It just starts in chapter 6, but the river just keeps growing and flooding the earth. So, so what happens in chapter 6? Well, uh, the Lord begins to unroll seven seals. And it says in verse 1, when he opened uh, one of the seals. Now, we already encountered this book in chapter 5, and it's a seven-sealed scroll. And people, they go, oh, I wonder what that means. We don't have to wonder what that means. When was it written? It was written by John in the Roman Empire. So what did the people that got this letter think it meant? That's the first law of interpretation. What did God mean to the people he wrote it to? The two emperors that were sitting on the throne during the course of this time period, both we have existing today, their wills, where they bequeathed the control of the empire to their successors, to the ones they chose. Both of those emperors wrote and declared that for a will or a title deed or a disposition of authority and power to be official, it had to have seven seals on it. And, and if you read Roman law from the first century, a seven-sealed document was a picture of a title deed or of a will transferring the power. And so what we see is God the Father having this title deed, this, this transfer, hands it to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ starts breaking the seals. And that's what chapter 6 is about. And he just breaks six of them. By the time we get to the sixth one, look what, look what happens. Starting in verse 12. As the Lord begins to unroll the seven seals, each one breaks open and reveals another event that's going to happen. And by the sixth one in verse 12, we have an earthquake. I mean, and, and what an earthquake. Uh, I mean, it, it's the most descriptive one I've... Uh, read about. He opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became as black as sackcloth of hair. That's black. The moon became like blood. That's really red. The stars of the heaven fell to the earth like a fig tree drops its light figs. Can you imagine, you know, you're out on a summer night and all of a sudden one of the kids says, oh, look, you know, a shooting star. And everybody looks and there isn't anymore. And they all just look and there's, you know, no more shooting stars. And so you look away. Can you imagine when the whole sky is looking like every one of those stars is falling to the earth and meteor shower, whatever the Lord is doing here, the people think every star is falling out of the sky and all of a sudden it says, in the midst of that, that verse 14, the sky recedes like a scroll. Now most of us don't have scrolls around home, but my grandmother used to have scrolls covering her windows. And I remember, they were these spring-loaded things that came down, and I was always the one that pulled it too far. And, it, you know, and you're just trying your hardest to put the thing back up, and you're tugging and tugging and tugging, and just when she would come into the room, you know, it would go just like that. That's the picture, see, it says, of a scroll receding. Uh, the verse 14, the sky recedes like a scroll when it's rolled up and every mountain and island move out of its place. Basically, God makes the earth shake and as the whole earth is shaking, everything is coming loose in the sky and the sky is rolling up like a scroll. Basically, this is all like being inside of a global horror movie. Well, how would you like to be in a global horror movie? Can you imagine that? Look at verse 15. The shaken inhabitants of the earth scream for the rocks and the mountains to fall and hide them. Look at the description. From the top, the kings of the earth, then the great men, then the rich men, then the commanders, the titans that are running everything, then the mighty men, and every slave, and every free man. So the entire strata of society, top to bottom, totally hide themselves in caves and in rocks of the mountains. Why? 
They're asking the mountains and rocks, verse 16, to fall on us and hide us from the king, from the face of the king. So here you are in this global horror movie, and you're a shaken inhabitant screaming for the rocks to fall, and, and you're only at the last verse of the first of 15 chapters. That's only the first round of the tribulation. 